Less than 24 hours until Election Day, the Liberals and the Conservatives remain in a two-way race to the finish line. Now, throughout the campaign, the frontrunners have both struggled to make significant gains in support, but there are some new surprise factors at play. So here's where the race stands the morning before. According to the latest Nanos research poll, the Liberals have 30.8%, Conservatives 30.5%, NDP 21%, the Bloc 6.5%, the People's Party 5.6%, Greens at 4.7, the poll survey 1,200 people over three days, ending September 18th, margin of error 2.5 percentage points, 19 times out of 20. So those are just the top line numbers. But vote efficiency is key, what actually translates into seats. And what's the path to victory for each party? What trends should you be watching for tomorrow night? The Scrum is here to dig into that. Marika Walsh, a reporter with the Globe and Mail on Parliament Hill. Stephanie Levitz, a Hill reporter for the Toronto Star, and our special guest, CEO of Nanos Research, Nick Nanos. Great to see everybody. All right, here we go. Nick, dead heat. We just saw the top line numbers. Dig in, though. Like, what should we know beneath those numbers in terms of paths to victory? Well, this is a lot like 2019, Evan. The fact of the matter is, in 2019, it was a tight, dead heat between the Liberals and the Conservatives. But the Liberals, because of vote efficiency, were able to win more seats. But what I'm looking at, key battlegrounds outside of the island of Montreal, Bloc and Liberals, that will be a key determinant in terms of how strong or weak the next minority government will likely be. And the GTA Toronto, some key battlegrounds. It'll be interesting to see how well or how poorly the Conservatives do. And then we can't leave out British Columbia, those three-way races. And the People's Party, wild card, right across the board for both the Conservatives and also the Liberals in terms of vote splitting. All right, uh, Marika, what are you watching for tomorrow? I'm watching for turnout. I think it really comes down to the People's Party. Can they get their vote out? When you look at the numbers, the Conservatives would be in such a stronger position if that People's Party vote was in their camp as well. And so how many people actually show up and actually vote will be a key a key metric to watch. Yeah, I wonder if those, uh, Steph, I'd love to know what you're watching for because you got 5.8 million people who already had advanced uh, voting. I don't know who that breaks for. Is it the, the Conservatives or not? But what are you looking for tomorrow? So one of the things I think we're in for is a really long night because there's a lot of very close three-way races in lower mainland British Columbia. And it's those seats that at the end of the day could potentially tip the balance of power one way or the other. And it'll also be a key place to watch to see how well the NDP finishes in the end. Mm -hmm. They've had a lot of support there. The collapse of the Green Party vote, um, largely people think it'll go NDP. It might not. We'll have to see. And so the, the other wild card being the Green Party is what I'm watching for too. Can Annamie Paul win a seat? Who knows, can her current MPs hold their seats, perhaps? And where do her voters end up parking their vote at the end of the day? Yeah, that, so Nick, go in, because there's Block, you know, PPC party, uh, which no one has, has a clue. This is really the first time they're this kind of viability. And the Green vote, how does that uh, play spoiler, if anything? Oh, it plays spoiler not only for the Liberals, but for the Conservatives. You know, the fact of the matter is, the big question is, who's going to turn out and how heavy or light will the turnout be? And that will have a critical impact on the outcome of the election. But, you know, the thing is, is whether you're Justin Trudeau and the Liberals, you're looking at the Greens and you're also looking at Jagmeet Singh. Jagmeet Singh, the last day or two, his personal numbers have been going up, especially in the province of British Columbia, to Stephanie's point. Okay, so, so if he holds at 20, by the way, that's a real number, Nick, Marika. Yeah. Uh, if he holds... That's the Liberal strategic vote, you know, please don't vote NDP because mm -hmm. it's a vote for Aaron O'Toole. Uh, if, if Judgment Singh holds 20, which is about three or four points higher than he was in 2019, then what, what, what do you watch for there in terms of Liberals uh, and how that plays out? Well, you're looking at Toronto ridings then. You're looking at, as Steph said, the lower mainland. And, and the question is, are the splits on both sides then still helping the Liberals. But it definitely is a question of Justin Trudeau's strategic voting message that he has been ramping up in the last week right. doesn't seem to have the same effect that it certainly had in 2015 and that we saw it have a bit of an effect in 2019. So the question is, can he actually hammer that message home? So far, he hasn't been able to. Okay, let's go to the proof. But the other question is, go of ahead, course... Steph. Oh, I was going to say, if the NDP remains strong, then what we're looking at is for the Conservatives to split down the middle, mm -hmm. right, is to come up the middle as they so often do. I mean, history shows that most of the times Conservative governments win, it's when the NDP is in second place. Yeah. They need that cannibalization of the vote on the left. And that's why they're so, I think, as Jenny said in a panel earlier with you, Evan, that's why the collapse of the Green vote is so problematic for them, because it doesn't split that vote even further on the left. Jay, let me just stay with you quickly, Steph. Let's just go to, to close, because the prove it or lose it. Uh, what did each party have to prove or, or did they lose? Mr. Trudeau wanted a majority. 
the polls show he's not close to that right now. Uh, Aaron O'Toole says, I can beat this guy. What happens to Mr. Trudeau if it's a weak minority? What happens to Mr. Uh, O'Toole if he doesn't win? Or, or Jagmeet Singh if he still never recovers the 20 seats he lost in 2019? Steph. Yeah, let's go backwards to forwards. I mean, start with the NDP. They don't necessarily cannibalize or eat their own as fast as the Conservative Party does, nor as the Liberal Party does. They give their leaders a lot of time. If Jugmeet can make gains, any gains, they give him time. He has to decide if he wants to keep it. Going the other way to Justin Trudeau. This is now, you know, he's six years in as Prime Minister. How much longer was he planning to stick around in the first place? It's going to be a question. The very first day of the election, he got the question. If you don't win a majority, will you resign? So the folks around him are going to also have to say, okay, how long can we hold on to this? Do you want to ride it out 18 months, trigger a leadership race, or what? Mm. And that decision, in turn, I think, will factor into what happens to Conservative leader Aaron O'Toole. Can he convincingly make the case to the party membership who ultimately determine his future that, look, Trudeau's on his way out, we just need one more, the pandemic, we didn't want this election, it's not our fault, yada, yada, yada. And, you know, he really has to play back mm. to some of the messaging he's been drawing out throughout the campaign, which is he's trying to build a new party and he has to be given time to do that. I'm not quite sure that's going to work. Caucus is mad. They don't like the way this is rolled out. Um, but will they give him the leeway right. to do that? Do they have the stomach for another leadership race? We'll have to see. Uh, Marika. Yeah, but the problem with Aaron O'Toole is that he is in the campaign trying to build a new party and a new brand that he did not sell to the base when he was going for leadership. And I'm not sure the party will be patient enough to see what the Liberals do. I don't think he has that much time. Look at what happened with Andrew Scheer. So I actually think one of the things to look for after we find out the result whenever that comes this week is the future of these leaders. Yeah. Justin Trudeau and Aaron O'Toole will both have questions to answer to their base when this is over. Unless you win big and that's Unless you win everything. big and then right. somebody else has a problem. Yeah, winning is solves everything. Nick, just quickly before I go, if you had one big surprise you're looking for, if there's something, you know, there's always a surprise on election night that no one saw, what could be the big jack in the box? PPC. How will, you know, are they underreported in the polls potentially? Are they over motivated to vote? Where will their where will their number land? And uh, if the PPC is strong, it's going to be like billiards, Evan. You know, the balls yeah. hitting each other all over the place. It's another wild card. Yeah, billiards in the boast if he wins the boast. <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, Steph Levitz, Nick Nanos, Marika Walsh, great to have all of you here.